Do you like high stakes hostage situations? Hello, hello. All right, great. This is working. This if you right. shoot that hostage, you're dead. Police on your knees. Oh, thank God. He's only incapacitated. Hey, we didn't fail the man. The tactical FPS genre is all about leaning. You lean. You lean some more. You think somebody may be in that room there? You lean and check it out. You add leaning to a game and I will at least spend 100 hours in it. And as my addiction to leaning deepened over the last seven years, I couldn't stop hearing about the boomer shooter classic SWAT 4. SWAT 4 is a tactical shooter horror simulator that requires nerves of steel and trigger discipline paired with precise shooting and a calm mind. What makes it the best is really not the gunplay, though. At this point, it's pretty outdated. I mean, you can't even look down the fucking sight. And this is what the one gun with the scope looks like. But what actually makes it so special is that it had the audacity to pose the controversial questions. Do we really have to kill all of them? Or can we arrest some of them, too? Also, is it really morally sound to shoot? This game is all about getting your heart pounding, your sweat flowing. It wants you to get so on the edge that you might just do an oopsie and riddle a civilian with a mag full of 5.56. Hell, even the AI will occasionally take part in a little bit of trolling. Now, the most unfortunate thing about SWAT 4 is the fact that we'll never get a sequel to it. And this is because back in 2008, Vivendi decided to merge with Activision, and Activision displayed no interest in making a SWAT game because they are in the beating the dead horse business. Then, to take it one step further, 13 years down the line, then Microsoft bought Activision, and they are in the beating the guy who's beating the dead horse business. So, although I'm really curious to see what they would do with a SWAT 4 sequel, I'd rank the possibility of getting a SWAT 5 right next to the possibility of a second coming. Now let's return to 2005. I would like to start this review by refuting the allegations that I overuse lethal force. In fact, dare I say I, I don't use it enough. I run up to that building, blow open the door, mag dump the assailants, and cause a panic like a goddamn American hero. Then spend 20 minutes retracing my steps to find that one civilian so that I can finally finish the level, only to find out that I completely failed it because of five charges of something called non-authorized use of lethal force. <laughs> I got an idea for you, Mission Command. Why don't you go and authorize yourself some bitches? Maybe lethal force is a last defense if you're a nerd trying to maintain the peace. I bet you can't wait for the Saints Row reboot. I bet you think it looks amazing. No, the only reform happening here is a 45 ACP-shaped reformation of the enemy's head. Can I get a praise B? But corporate SWAT just doesn't know what the hell I'm talking about, and this is why I feel most missions north of 10 times each. What they want you to do is to abide to this wacky little thing called the rules of engagement, which is essentially just the following. If you walk into a room, you have to at least attempt to give the suspect a non-lethal resolution. A simple yell is really the difference between a war crime and a war commendation. Unless, of course, the enemy takes aim, takes a hostage, or hey, you take a shot at them to bait them into combat and then just follow them until they try to turn around and shoot you. <laughs> Theoretically speaking, of course, I I would, I would never do anything like that. Unrelated, let's talk about killing women. I mean, collateral damage, civilians, and honest accidents that really could have happened to anyone. You see, the bad thing about acceptable casualties is the part where you have to live the rest of your life knowing that you failed the mission. Because, you know, somehow the autopsy showed that I was the one that shot Becky. However, what it didn't show was the part where Becky was being a hysterical bitch. Now, there is a gray area here. You may not be able to kill hostages without mission failure, but you can incapacitate them. And in my extensive testing, I found that the head is actually the safest part of a hostage to hit because it gives a 100% chance of incapacitating and not inca killing them. The same cannot be said for the thorax. It's about a 50-50 odds if you were curious. So although it's preferable to do neither, I'm just saying. Now let's talk about the squad AI. If we're, if we're being honest, they're really just cannon fodder to make sure a room is clear. You do control them to an extent. You can ask them to open and clear, breach this, fall in on that. But how they do it is really up to them. A and let me say, they have moments of incredible competence and moments of incredible stupidity. For example, there are the many times where they can identify a bad actor immediately and in a split second remove their chest cavity. But then there are the other times where they walk into a room past a man with a gun, forcing me to quickly, calmly, and measuredly handle it, following it up by then breaching the room as I'm trying to leave and blinding me with a flash burning my fucking retinas out. Technically, okay, fine. If you want to be a stickler for the details, this is completely my fault. Maybe... Maybe I asked too much of them. By the end of the game, I'm pretty sure I had broken them mentally. Those 
Jesus Christ, here, let me get that for you. So, so dramatic. The enemy AI does not suffer from the performance issues of the squad AI. They will turn on a dime and kill you faster than you can say, Police! <laughs> I've seen one of them wipe out my entire team in five seconds, and that's if they don't fake surrender, then try to whip out the big iron and dome you. However, their godlike reaction time paired with the necessity to attempt surrender is exactly what makes clearing rooms so thrilling. If I could just walk in here and shoot everyone without stopping for a second, then this would just be a boring, toned down version of Rainbow Six Vegas, aka Rainbow Six Three. <laughs> Hey, please, please, don't throw things at me, come on. But when you knock open a door, flood into the room with your squad, and everyone's yelling with their hands on the trigger, you need these bad guys to surrender. One even fakes that he will surrender. Then you walk out of sight, but then BAM! You hear gunshots. Jesus Christ, Jibber instead. How will I tell his family? They deserve the warm embrace of hell. But that doesn't fill the gibby-sized hole in your heart, so you go home. You play with the wife. Oh shit, I gotta sneeze. You play with the wife, you kiss the dog, and every time you hear those helicopters whirring on Paw Patrol, you think of Big Gibby. That my friend. That is what SWAT is all about. Guns in this game are in fact guns. I, I was going to rant about all of them for four minutes, but instead I've executively decided that I don't want to. Just know that the conclusions of my disturbed ramblings were these three things. One, C2 is the best gun. Two, slugs are absolutely horrible. Three, if you use the beanbag shotgun, you're a little bitch. Hey, 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 why are you showing that? Cut, cut. Now, what I do want to talk about is the multiplayer. Although IGN shut down the game spy services in 2013, you can actually still play the multiplayer, but it's a little finicky to get started. You see, what you gotta do is go to Steam's website, then look up Ready or Not and go buy that. Ready or Not is a SWAT 5 simulator where you have to go out of your way to get a rules of engagement penalty because pretty much everyone engages with you for First. In this game, I don't worry about if they're going to surrender. I worry about when they're going to slit my fucking throat with their knife. Ron is like SWAT 4's gameplay on steroids, replacing all the narrative and world building with incredible graphics and tons of new gameplay features that make SWAT 4's gameplay loop feel simple. To list several new nice additions, to diversify the enemy pool, they added British people to the game. You can use the beanbag shotgun to send people to heaven with extra steps. Riot shields. I'm fucking invincible! Also wearing riot shields on your back in what I call the Ninja Turtle approach. Some AIs can moonwalk out of doors and one shot. You specifically pistol packing AIs can John Wick kill a whole team. Windows can merge into your body and claim your life and trip my- <laughs> That shit oh, hurt.